Disgusting. A-level maths questions, episode three. And I'm gonna do something from AS now, cause you know, I don't wanna leave the year 12s out. I think they deserve to suffer a bit too. So what I'm gonna do is gonna get the topics up, make sure I have got a S selected, and then I'm gonna go to differentiation here. And I wanna do application of differentiation because you can get some pretty horrible questions in that. So there's one that I wanna do called maximize the volume of a cuboid. So it looks like we've got two parts here and I think that'll do for today's video. So let's get into the whiteboard and have a bit of a read through. So we've got a large container in the shape of a cuboid and it's to be made from 144 meters squared of sheet metal. The container has no top and a horizontal base. The container has equal height and length given by x plus two meters, whereas the width is y meters. Show that the volume V of the container is given by all of that. Minus two over three times x cubed plus eight squared plus bx plus c. So I assume we're gonna actually want the values of a, b, and c here. Okay, so what's going on? L let's get the graph up. Um, we know that we can get the volume of this thing. I don't think that's the hard bit. So the volume of a cube board is basically just going to be all the sides times together. So it's going to be y times x plus 2 and then times another x plus 2. So that's going to be x plus 2 squared. But that's not the answer, is it? And the reason is because the answer, if you look at it, it's just given in terms of x. So we're going to then want to use a different piece of information or equation to then substitute this y out for something in terms of x. And the piece of information that we're going to use is we know what the surface area of this thing is going to be equal. So we know that 144 is going to equal and then which is the surface area, however else we can work out the surface area. So looking at this thing, basically just going to be all of these, you know, sides added together. So there's no side on the top because it's got an open top. So which sides do we want? Well, this side here is going to be y times by x plus 2. But there's going to be two of them, isn't there? Because there's one on the other side as well. So that's going to be 2yx plus 2 for those two sides. This side here is going to be x plus 2 times by x plus 2. So we're going to have an x plus 2 squared there. But again, there's going to be one on this other side. So that's going to be plus 2 lots of x plus 2 squared. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 sides here. We just need the bottom, don't we? And the bottom is going to be y times x plus 2. Okay, so it looks like we've got a bit of an equation on our hands. So this here is 3yx plus 2, because these are both the same term, right? Okay, and then plus 2, lots of x plus 2 squared. Right, okay, so there's a bit going on. I need to rearrange this for y, don't I? So let's take this to the left. So we get 3yx plus 2. I'm just flipping the side of the equation here. I'm not actually doing any maths. I just want to write it like this so the y is on the left. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two lots of x plus 2 squared from both sides. So I'm going to get 144 minus 2x plus 2 squared. And then I'm going to divide. So I'm going to divide by three lots of x plus 2. So I'm going to get y equals 144 divided by three lots of x plus 2 minus 2x plus 2 squared divided by three lots of x plus two. Can we simplify? I think we can. Don't think we can in the first one, so I'm gonna leave it like this. But the second one, look, we've got x plus two squared divided by x plus two, so one of those are gonna cancel. So I'm gonna get two over three times by x plus two. Now this is good, why? Because this can go straight into the formula for the volume. So if the volume is y times x plus 2 squared, then the volume is x plus 2 squared times by all of this stuff. So this is going to be horrible, isn't it? Here we go. So what do we have? I feel like we're going to have to do some kind of cubic expansions. Oh, all right. Well, we might as well just get cracking, right? So, okay. This is kind of nice because one of the x plus two is gonna cancel. So I'm gonna get 144. One of them cancels, then I'm still left with one on the top. So I've got the over three and then times by x plus two here. And then minus two thirds, and then this is gonna be x plus two all cubed. Right, okay. So 
I'm just going to want to multiply everything out here. So I think my best shout is I am actually just going to do it turn by turn. So I'm going to try and keep fractions for as long as possible because they're exact. So I'm going to get 144 over 3 times x. And then plus, well, that's what? Going to be 288 over 3. I'm just times in that by 2. Okay, minus 2 thirds. I think it's probably good. No, you know what? Let's just do it in a big bracket here. I was going to say do the x plus 2 cubed separately, but if it's just within a big bracket, that's all we need to do. Okay, so what is this going to be? I'm, I'm going to do this relatively quickly, but this is going to be a binomial expansion. Now, the binomial coefficients for the cubed from Pascal's triangle are 1, 3, 3, and 1. So now these are just going to correspond to different powers of the x and the 2. So the first one is going to be x cubed times 2 to the 0, which is 1. The second one is going to be x squared times 2 to the 1. The third one is going to be x to the 1 times 2 squared. And then the last one is just going to be x to the 0, which is 1 times 2 cubed. Cool. Go over binomial expansion. This lesson isn't really about that, so I, don't, I don't, didn't want to spend too much time on it. Okay, so essentially we've got our stuff, we just need to clean it up. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is let's just keep all of this stuff here and then see if we can simplify what's inside the bracket at all. 1 times x cubed is x cubed. x squared 3 times 2 to the 1 is 3 times 2, which is 6, so this is just going to be plus 6x squared. 3 times 2 squared, well, 2 squared is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. So I get plus 12 lots of x. And then 2 cubed is 8. Whew! Okay, so let's multiply the bracket out and clean all the terms up. So again, I think I just want to keep this stuff here. And then let's start multiplying this out. So I get minus 2 over 3x cubed. Minus 2 over 3 times 6, well, what's that? 2 times 6 is 12, divide that by 3, I get 4, so that's going to be minus 4x squared. Remember, all of these terms are going to be minus here, because I've got this outside the bracket. Uh, let's see, 12 divided by 3 is 4, and I want to times that by 2, which is 8, so this is going to be minus 8x. And then 8 times 2 over 3 is going to be 16 over 3, so that is going to be there. Looks horrible, but let's kind of try and get this in the right form. Okay, so interestingly, let's look at the answer. It has a 2 over 3 there. So what I actually should have done was not multiply this out because it looks like the answer wants it all to be factorized out anyway. But that's not too much of a problem because, you know, these are things that we realize when we're in the exam doing it. No one's perfect. So instead, actually, I can kind of forget about that. I can take this 2 over 3... And it is a minus 2 over 3. So first of all, I know that all of this is just going to be inside that. So I'm going to get my, you know, x cubed plus 6x squared plus 12x plus 8. And then I'm going to factorize minus 2 over 3 out of this stuff. So I essentially just need to kind of divide it, right? So if I was to do 144 over 3 and then divided by 2 over 3, I'm going to get 72. So this is going to be minus 72, and then that's an x. And then again, 288 over 3 divided by 2 over 3 is going to be 144. And again, that's going to be a minus, so minus 144. Now it's a case of cleaning up, and I hope I've got the right answer here. So this is going to be minus 2 over 3. x cubes, I've just got one of them. x squareds, I've just got this 6x squared here x's, I've got plus 12x minus 72x, which I believe is going to be minus 60x. And then numbers, I'm going to have 8 minus 144, which is going to be minus 136. Okay, that is part A. Whew. Okay, let's have a look at part B. You're interested in maximizing the volume V while keeping the surface area constant. What value of x would you choose? So I think this makes sense, right? Imagine, you know, you had a set amount of metal and you were a shipping or container company or whatever. And, and obviously, you know, you want to be transporting goods. If you have a set amount of metal, 
you'd probably want that amount of metal to be able to transfer, transfer, transport, got there in the end, as much volume as possible, right? Obviously, you would want that to be the case. You wouldn't want to use more metal to transport the same amount. So it's, it's a natural question, right? How are we going to maximize the capacity of this box? So maximum values, what does that make you think? It makes me think of differentiation. So we know that this is the volume here, and this is the thing we want to maximize. All of the work we did in part A was essentially to just get this in terms of X as a function of X. And why? because it's now quite easy to differentiate and we can just get a value of X from that. If there was the Y still there, things start getting a bit more complicated. So all we need to do here is dV by the X, differentiate V with respect to X. So this minus two over three, I'm gonna keep it out there and then I can differentiate inside. So bring the power down, take one from the power. So I'm gonna get three X squared plus 12 X, minus 60, and then this goes because the power of x is zero there. So stationary points occur when the derivative is equal to zero, meaning I can set this equal to zero. Now, I can actually simplify things quite a lot here. I can first of all just get rid of that minus two over three, because if I was to divide both sides by minus two over three, zero divided by minus two over three is still zero. So I'm gonna get three x squared plus 12 x minus 60 equals zero, and I believe can cancel another three here. So this is gonna get me x squared plus 12 divided by three, which is four x. 60 divided by three, which is 20 equals zero. Okay, this is quite nice. So, I mean, does it factorize first of all? Um, let's think of factors of 20. I've got 10 and two. Don't think I can get those to add to four. Got four and five. I also don't think I can get those to add to four. So I don't think this is nicely factorizable. So why don't I stick this in the quadratic formula? So you can use your calculator as well. There's, you can complete the square, whatever you want. Let's go quadratic formula here. So I'm gonna go minus B, so minus four, plus minus the square root of B squared, so four squared, minus four times A, which is one, times C, which is minus 20, all over 2a, which is 2. Okay, so let's have a bit of a think of this. First of all, I've got a plus minus, so obviously I'm gonna get two solutions, but I think only one solution is gonna make sense in the context of our question. If I have a minus four and then minus something, this thing is definitely gonna be positive, and then I just divide it by two. So using the minus here, I'm gonna get a negative x value. Does that make sense? So here's the thing. It might make sense because the sides of this thing are actually x plus two. So if I had a negative x value, that doesn't necessarily mean that x plus two would be negative because if we had a negative side, that doesn't make sense. So would the negative values here still make x plus two negative? And I think they would. And the reason why is because if I was to divide by two here, I would get minus two plus minus and then this stuff you know, minus four times minus 20, all over two. So we can see here that the negative value is gonna be a value less than minus two because it's minus two take away something. And then obviously if I add two to that, I'm still gonna get a negative number, but that wouldn't make sense because X plus two is the length of a side, it has to be positive. Meaning that the X value that I care about is just going to be this, but the positive version of it. So you can always be thinking in terms of the context of the question. It happens in mechanics a lot as well. If I get two answers, but I should only have one, is there a way to discount one of them? And it's always gonna to be to do with, you know, the kind of real life application of the problem. So it's calculator time. So I'm gonna do minus two plus the square root of four squared minus four times minus 20 or over two. And that is going to get me 2.89897 dot dot dot. So that's actually rounded loads. It turns out that there is a third value for this and this is gonna be minus two plus two root six. So obviously this is exact. Um, am I finished here? I don't think we are. And the reason is, 
I found a stationary point here. When I set the derivative equal to zero, it tells me that, you know, okay, these, the solutions to this x equation are gonna be stationary points, but I don't necessarily know that it's a maximum yet. So how would I do that? I'm gonna to need to find the double derivative. So if this is the derivative, what is the double derivative going to be? So I'm gonna get d2v by dx squared is going to equal, so the minus two thirds is still gonna be out here. And then again, I just differentiate again. So this is gonna be six x plus 12. And then I need to see if, when I sub my x value into this, if it is positive or negative. So I would say, uh, you know, at stationary point, what is the value of this derivative? It's going to be minus two over three times by six, times by this is my value here. We might as well go exact. Always, if you have the chance, go exact when you're putting things into your calculator, plus 12. Right, evaluating this whole thing, I get minus two over three times by six, times by minus two plus two root six plus 12, close the bracket, and I get minus eight root six. Now, this is good because this is a negative number, therefore my stationary point is a maximum. Whew, fantastic. So it's interesting there because they don't specifically say, you know, make sure to prove that it's a maximum. Sometimes they say it, and sometimes they specifically say, you don't need to prove that it's a maximum or a minimum. Or sometimes they won't say anything. If they don't say anything, please do it. You know, they, they, you just need to cover your bases. If you know how to do this, take you an extra minute and you can make sure that there is nothing that they can deduct you for on that question. As always, the solution to this, if you try this on AI Tutor, is all there if you get it right or wrong. So you can always check over and fully read through how to do this if that's useful as well.